guys uh, both look no great. More. Man, I'm in my 20s. All right, are we ready to start? I got dog hair everywhere. All right, so I'm just going to count us in. Every and time we we'll start talking, count. Jackie's got the face the on. Count. How do I look? Can I cross my legs? You can cross your legs. You can do what you want. You cross your legs, I can cross my legs. This is like Heaven's Happy Hour. Think of it that way. Longhorn. Finisher, thank you. Jackie, Move. thank you guys. All right, we ready? Yeah. I'm going to count us in. We'll just start talking. Oh, ready? Okay, the count is on Three, two. <laughs> Rob, we can't stir us at this part. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome to the No Roof Podcast. This is episode, what are we on, Rafa? I think we're episode five. Is this five, Jack? Yep. Wow, this is episode five. We have an amazing guest. We call him the Godfather, and uh, we'll get into that later. Um, Rafa, what are we doing today? Today, I think we're taking off off the roof of failures or mistakes. Failures and mistakes. I love it. I love it. And we'll probably take off other words, but that's the main topic. I like that. I like that. Well, I'm your host. I'm Abel. I am. I have to slow this part down. I am Abel. I am Chaba. And this is my co-host Rafa Gutierrez. Oh, you said is it. That's that right? beautiful. Yeah, that's mom it. Would be proud. Yeah, choo-choo. we call him Choo Choo, and together right. we're Chaba Choo Choo. Chaba Choo Choo. Before we say your name, let's hit into that intro. All right, welcome back. So. We have an amazing guest today. We call him the Godfather, but his real name is Let's Welcome Patrick Arnone. Thank you so Ooh, much. Let's go, for Patrick. Being wait, here. wait. Oh. So, um, on this show, we love taking. We call it taking the roof off. Yep. What does and that mean? What that really means is taking the roof off. We say religion, and it's just it's really anything that sucks the life and joy out of the room. But it's also just we take. I mean, Rafa does this amazingly. We take the roof off things we think we know, and that we just kind of, I don't know, how would you say it? We just kind of mull over. Yeah, casually I think, yeah. just walk by it. Well, we get familiar, or we pretend it's not there, or we pretend we know because we want to look perfect to the rest of the world. Right. But really, it's limiting us rather than being the best version of ourselves. Right. So we want to take the roof off mistakes. So, Patrick, I met you. When did I meet you? I started coming Living Faith in 05. When did you start coming? It would have been about 01, 02. 01, 02. So you came right before me. And then I remember yeah. meeting you. Actually, I remember seeing your wife first. She was preaching. Of course, everyone usually does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is a Holy Spirit-filled um, yes. powerhouse woman. My yes. gosh. How do you live with that kind of fire? It's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> oh, good. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so the people can get to know you, could we just ask, um, you know, you're, you're a business guy. Can you tell us just your journey, just a quick history? Yes. Uh, of my career, business yeah, of your career, career, please. Everything, yes. We know you're a very humble man. Don't be humble here, yeah, okay? Don't be humble. Just, no, I'm not us. humble. Um, <laughs> we need to be a vulnerable. But I, I should mention, though, if you want to yeah. talk about mistakes and uh, failures, you got the wrong guy because I'm perfect. I'd be oh, my God. <laughs> Is, that's why we yeah, need yeah. you. That's, that's why, why we need, we need you. you. Yeah, we unfortunately your testimony has been recorded. <laughs> Yo, that's and, uh, right. we've all oh, heard yes, it. I forgot you so, heard that. Yes. So don't, okay. don't make me play that for the crowd. So my career, yes, um, I'll net this out as quickly as I can. No, take your time. Uh, but so in high school, I graduated high school sixty four, did not go to college, and was not a good student. I don't learn in the classic classroom kind of a setting Mm. right so I struggled with it I didn't want to go to college um I just wanted to get my life started again in my parents house were your parents okay with that I know a lot of parents are like at that no 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 they were not okay uh okay with that but you know um you know I was of age I could decide what I wanted to do but Mm. um and my parents weren't worldly people so um anyway so I had no idea what I wanted to do <clears throat> and back in the 60s in high school, all they had available were resources to help you, help you with some career counseling. And it was it was just pathetic. I right. Mean, mm. the, it was like close the, your the eyes primary, and something. The <laughs> primary thing I was told by the high school counselor I should do as a career was a funeral director. A funeral director? And I hated funerals. I'd been to two at that point in my life, and they were both very traumatic. How did traumatic. they pick that? I have no idea. <laughs> I asked the counselor. I said, you know, how in the heck did you come up with that based on the answers to my questions? They didn't have an answer. Oh, so that tells you how yeah, yeah. Um, inferior that was. Mm-hmm. So um, I decided to go into the computer industry without knowing what that was. My parents had, had, dis, you know, had suggested computers. When I asked them what that meant in 1964, they couldn't explain it. And what amazes me because my mother graduated from high school. My dad 
dropped out of the fifth grade. His parents took him out of school wow. to work the coal mine. So wow. they okay. didn't know anything about computers. They mm. were That was the early days of the buzz, if you will, about mm, computers. Right. So I wow. went to a business school for like a year to learn what was real basic computer stuff. Um, and that, that was college. You went to college for that? No, no, not college. It was a business school. Just a, oh, wow. Wait, are you no from college. here? Where is this? Is this Virginia? D.C. I was this a native uh, okay. Washingtonian. Nice. All right. Lived in the city until I was eight, and they kind of grew up in Maryland. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. And, That's awesome. Um, oh, wait, I, I got a question, Mr. Patrick. For that funeral director, did that lower your self-confidence, somebody telling you that? Or no, I did thought you it feel was, about I that? I thought it was um, hysterical. I thought <laughs> it was, no, I thought, you know, I know you're wrong because, you know, I hate funerals. I, I mean, there's no way I would That's so do good. that. Okay. That's so good. So, um, anyway, so I went to this business school and then launched my career in the computer industry in, in 65. And I started in what was called computer operations. Mm. And, you know, and I knew that this wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I kind of looked around you know, in the second company I was in. And I saw these guys that they called salespeople. I had no idea what a salesperson did. <laughs> wow. You know? And so, you know, they're dressed in nice suits, have nice cars, come in at 10 in the morning, go for a long lunch. I don't see them again after three or four. I nice. Said, I want to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want. We're I want in the wrong that. job. Oh, and they're gosh. making good money. <laughs> Ten to three. So wow. um, I went into sales in the uh, late 60s and hated it for two really? years. Hated really? It. No yeah. way. Because you're good to talk yeah. to. You're fun to talk to. Wait, well, why did you hate it? What, what did you hate I about hated it? it because of the rejection. There was uh, a oh. high degree of rejection. When you cold Ooh. call, which, you know, as a new salesperson, yeah. that's all you're doing. You're cold calling, knocking on doors, mostly, you know, picking up the phone and trying to get a, a, an appointment to meet with some right. buyer, computer executive, or whatever to sell your hardware, your software, whatever. And I hated rejection much because of my childhood, which we'll probably get into at some mm -hmm. point. Right. But uh, rejection was a big part of my dysfunction wow. um, coming out of my my family right. situation. Well, Mr. Patrick, uh, interesting enough, we did a podcast yeah. and you brought up the word rejection. Yeah. In this last one. Because so, that, yeah. that's a big one about well, it you was. Know, being being you know, we anyone that has a dream, you know, you're going to have to face that thing where you're going to get rejected. Right. And especially in sales, like you said, it's it's over it's and constant. over. It's constant. It's constant. Wow. And so how so did you, it, rejection how did, yeah. was very hard for me. Um, so I hated sales, but okay. I was determined to make it work because I didn't see the alternatives. I knew that I didn't want to continue operating computers. I knew that I wasn't, I didn't have the ability or the desire to program computers back then right uh, and so i thought you know in management i'm you know 20 something or you know maybe 2021 and i knew i wasn't ready for management i had no idea what that in entailed so i thought i've got to stick with sales so i just made it work just brute force made it work wow and then we i turned the corner and it started i started to see some success and what have you so i spent my I'd say 30 some years in sales, yeah. sales management, sales executive. Um, wow, I, you did well. Wow, so you I conquered enjoyed, it. I uh, enjoyed a lot of success in sales and made a lot of money back then. You know, Did you know God at this time? Pardon me? No. Did you know, not at all? No, no, okay. no, no. That, that didn't come until I was 45. Oh, wow. Which well, I'm me, sure we'll get to, but. Yeah. What, what was that turning the corner? Like, do you, was it a specific moment? Or, like, did you no. get the yeah. flow of it? Because when you're like, hitting rejection, right? It like wasn't, over, it wasn't a moment. It was it was perseverance and just the, the, the determination to make it work. Wow. Because, again, I felt yeah. like I had very few options or alternatives unless I went into a different industry and right. again I didn't know what I wanted I just wanted I wanted a successful career and I wanted money right wow. and and you and, pushed through it I gotta say this and I think Ralph I don't know if we're gonna agree with go this for it, go for it maybe you will agree like like your generation I hear that a lot like <clears throat> facing rejection and like like um was it Paul Mitchell uh, the shampoo guy, like yeah, he used to go right, door to door with his right, product, right? Right. And, like said the same thing, right? Wow. But he was determined, like you said. Where I don't know if our generation, it's like you know, you get you know three thumbs down on Facebook or and something. You cry. And people are like, they're yeah. out, <laughs> they're well, out. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point. And I think generations prior to me were even more so of that. Aggressive. Wow. I mean, they went through some difficult times right. yeah. with you know the Spanish flu, flu, flu oh, the, right, right, um, right. The depression, Great depression in particular, yeah. two two world wars. You know, I didn't really face any of that during 
my um, wow. early life, early career. Oh, so anyway, so I made, uh, excuse me, I made a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year wow. in the 70s, um, got a, all kinds of awards. And so I was flying high. <laughs> but, there, about there. The hold same. on, hold on, hold on. I'm taking over here. Because we need to know. Because we need to know. Now I got to finish this story. No, no, you got to have to wait. You have to wait. This is happy hour. We we interrupt each other. Um, you're a man. Okay, you're you're succeeding. Why God? And how? Oh, God? you're taking me down a whole I, nother road. I, we need to go there. So we're we're, we're reverting because, like you you said, it sounds like you have everything. You have the. I did have everything. American dream. I did. Why have Why God? And how did? And I don't how mean did he play sound picture? boastful, but I did no. have everything. Yeah, yeah. I had um, as. You know, I had everything but a good quality of life. Okay. Uh, my marriage was a wreck. My uh, family situation was a, a, a wreck with my children. Um, you know, it was career, career, career for wow. me. Wow. Gotcha. And I was so driven to succeed. Uh, it was, those were my, that was my priority. I mean, my yeah. wife was in, barely in the top 10. God doesn't even know, even right. though I grew up in a Catholic church, went to Catholic school for eight years. I had no relationship, no re- uh, no connection to God. Yeah, me so, too. So, um, I mean, God wasn't even on the radar screen. So, wow. um, How do you make his intro? Because I hit the wall. Mm. Wow. I hit the wall. Um, I'm about 45 now, just coming out of uh, Oracle, very successful time at Oracle, and um, my life was a disaster. Mm. I had you know, a an addiction to everything at that point in my life except for food. Wow. wow. Uh, I mean, drugs, women, alcohol, rage, money. Rage, wow. On and on and on, literally everything. Wow. And so I spent, I mean, I hit the wall big time. And my wife, uh, I was a womanizer. My wife had discovered I was in an affair. Wow. So uh, the wheels came off of Completely. this. Completely. My God. Completely. Wow. You know, like... Yeah. Wow, so I felt I had reached a crossroad uh, early on after hitting the wall and starting to go into counseling. I had this vision of sitting in my car, looking in the rearview mirror and seeing the crossroad, looking at the road behind me, which is a road I'd been on for 45 years of my life. And I see nothing but carnage. Jeez. I see people I hurt, you know, a lot of damage, a lot of accidents, a lot of, a lot of problems wow and then i looked at this other road you know at the crossroad and i could go down this road because my counselors were starting to talk to me about spiritual things which i didn't really want to talk or hear right. about <laughs> um, they, i would love to be in those they meetings. were talking about god <laughs> and you know why that was important and the, you know all that stuff and, and you didn't want it it sounds like even in those meetings oh no it like, wasn't anything were you very I, blunt were you like it, get that away from me yeah oh, no i was no i'm not bashful <laughs> or at least mm, okay. at this point in my life i was bashful as a young uh, mm. person but not uh no so they knew, but you know, they were so um, patient with me, uh-huh. uh, and so uh, diligent, and wow. just kept pushing and pushing. I mean, lovingly pushing uh, and encouraging, and all that. And it wasn't just the spiritual they were talking about. They were talking with me, counseling me, and you know, about my real life situations. So I knew I had, I was at this crossroad. I could continue on the life I had been. Because in some ways, it served me well from strictly a business point of view right. or from a career point of view. And then, but in every other respect, it was a disaster. Yeah, It's like looking at a resume. You know, everyone writes a nice resume. And, you know, you read my resume, it's like, wow, that's kind of good. You know, that's it. impressive. Yeah. That's like, wow, you accomplished a lot. You did a lot, yada, yada, yada. But you look at the backside of that resume, which is a real story of my life. Oof. It's a, it's 180. I mean, wow. it's, it is ugly. And so that's where I was. I was at the crossroad, and I thought I wanted to get off of the road I'd been on. I got to try something different because this, gotcha. you know, the only wow. thing I'm, the only way it's working is because I've made a lot of money, right? Wow. And I've gotten a lot of recognition, and I've gotten a lot of affirmation, which again were all kind of childhood issues. I left yeah. my parents home needing. You know, there were big voids in my life with wow with that. At, so, at this time, I have to ask, what was your image of God? I my impression was god was a punishing mean god gotcha yeah. you know i never felt any love uh of god uh of him towards me or me towards him mm-hmm. but me being afraid of god because if i sin that's right. not good 
You know, it was always negative. It was always punishment. It was always yeah. um, not a pleasant thing. And, gotcha. and it wasn't to me because he wasn't real in the physical. I mean, I couldn't see him. Right, right, I right, couldn't right. talk with him. And, you know, I never had seen a Bible uh, wow. in the church or in school. I didn't touch a Bible until 45. Wow. 46 years of age. Wow. Because so, um, so. I was thinking too, Mr. Pat, you're obviously a very smart man, <laughs> very logical thinking. A go-getter. <laughs> and a, definitely a go-getter. But God is also a spiritual being, right? So like they're telling you all these spiritual stuff. How did you logically make sense of this? Or was it until you saw the vision of the crossroads that you started to actually bring God into the situation? Like, How did you logically understand God? Yeah, that's good. Logically understand God. That's a good question. Um, it was, um, for me, it was a struggle because it didn't come easy. It didn't come quick. Mm. And, you know, I would meet my counselor because I was in crisis mm -hmm. uh, uh, two, three times a week. Wow. Okay. And I was having to do it before or after, you know, my, my business day. Wow. Uh, but he was extremely patient. He had the patience of Job, I've, I came to learn you oh, know, beautiful. about Job in the Bible, but he was very patient with me and very gentle, but very, you know, it was an excellent teacher, but, you know, it just, it took literally years. Years, wow. Oh, no, it, yeah, it didn't, my salvation, my acceptance of God and my acceptance of Jesus as my Lord and Savior took, took a while. Wow. And it came to me at a very quiet time. Come on. And again, this is with a couple of years of yes, yes. Um, counseling right. uh, with both general and specialized counseling. I was, I was invited to the uh, high tech, no, I'm sorry, not the high tech, the um, national prayer breakfast that they do. And it's a Capitol Hill kind oh, of. Oh, with, uh, with the president, the right? The president comes yeah. and oh, all yeah. that. Oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> and so there was an event after that called the YPO, Young Presidents Organization, that I was invited to go to was young uh, executives, young entrepreneurs, um, many of them old, younger than I was, because again, I'm in my mid forties at that point. And during that meeting, it was clearly to me what had been fed to me over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And people had been praying for me, uh, you know, unbeknownst <laughs> to me for a long time, yeah. including my grandmother, who I never communicated with Aww. because she only spoke Italian. I only spoke English. <laughs> That's but awesome. I found that found out, discovered at her death that um, of she was she passed and went to heaven just a few months after her hundredth birthday. That she'd been praying for me. So a lot of prayer, a lot of uh, counseling, a lot of uh, ministering into my life. Gotcha. And, and I quietly made the decision at that YPO meeting to accept Jesus. And it was no, it was no fireworks. It was none of that. I just, Beautiful. I felt this how many peace. years I got to ask how many, how many, how many years was that process from the, the um, counseling to start? And then when you said at the prayer meetings, you said, okay, this is the it time. Is quiet moment. It was uh, probably a year before I accepted Christ okay. as my Lord and Savior before I had the salvation moment. Yeah. Uh, but I continued in counseling for probably at least another six or 12 months because even though we were supposed to come clean in counseling with our counselors, we right. didn't. Both oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> both Terry and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take your time. We always long, held right. back something, you know. It was always yeah, yeah. The, the thing you didn't really want them to know. Yeah, but, it's hard. Uh, That's so hard to do. Yeah, and thank well, you for being vulnerable on this, by the way. Oh, thank no. You. it's. Uh, I love telling this uh, testimony because yeah. it's all about God. That's it's right. It's all That's about it. God's and grace. Even and, your story, and Rafa shared his story on Sunday, it just— Every story is so different, even to hear you of like, you know, I didn't just say yes. Mm -hmm. I think you hear well, so many stories where like people, it's like, a, yes, like just a quick transformation yes, yes. Or, or, you know, what it is where yours is yeah, like, no, that wasn't he was my... like, it sounded like you were like, I'm not changing. And God's like, I'm still oh, yeah, here. No, I'm I, not waiting. I, I, I'm I was not waiting. fighting you know, tooth and nail. I was yeah. kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm not going there. Wow. And, um, but I, let me, a couple of things that you, uh, Terry came to the Lord maybe a year and a half before I did. And, oh, and what, okay. what had occurred oh gosh, was wow. um, I had, she was very good about it and that she didn't, you she know. Didn't shove it down your throat. Was, was, oh, yeah, definitely not. She okay. was, she would advise by her friends, uh, just leave him alone, just pray for him. And just, you know, just, you know, let him see the changes in your life. Wow, that's beautiful. And she did. So what I saw, not immediately, but over a period of time, probably six months or so, I 
I realized that Terry, and I had known Terry for decades at this point in my yeah. life, that she had a peace and a calm I had never seen in her before. Wow. And I wanted that peace. I mean, because I had never had peace in my life. Uh, personal life, I had never had peace in my business life. Even with all the money and, calm. and all the success. Oh, the money, no, no, the money didn't do it. Wow. I mean, the money, uh, we know money yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. do yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. you um, saw it tangibly on her. Absolutely. So I wanted that. And that was the reason I think yeah. I kept going back to counseling and hearing the sp spiritual spiritual teaching, the spiritual mentoring of me. Yeah. Because I wanted that peace and I wanted that calm. And um, there was wow. a point I was going to make now to escape me, but it'll come back. But um, So she was going to like, was she going to church every Sunday, Bible studies during she the She was in Bible studies with some of her girlfriends. Okay. And she was in counselor counseling as well with the same gotcha. counselor that you know I was in the male, the, or, you know, our right. close male friend, strong Christian. He was actually he's been since college part of the Navigators. He was a, a navi Navigator okay. national leader, uh, which you know to, uh, we didn't know what the Navigators were, but um, right. we came to learn them. But my other the other <laughs> point that came to mind that I just uh, remembered was. Even though I didn't come to Christ until my mid 40s, and I came to, I was told by several people that that was kind of unusual, not, not unique or rare, but unusual for yeah. someone to come to Christ later in their life. I mean, later, I mean, mid 40s, right, you still right. have it's beautiful. maybe half of your life. But the other, once I made that decision for him and started living my life differently, started turning my life around, which is a whole nother story. I started to recognize that he was in my life all the whole time. before Ooh. that time. That yeah. was my next the question. Things, the yeah. things that I experienced, uh, which I never attributed to God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, right. whether it was miracle health healings, because I had several close encounters to death, wow. one because of a cocaine addiction, um, the, um, uh, you know, truly what I've, you know, an OD, did you overdose? I was going to ask. Uh, oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. Um, and who, Jesus was there? Yeah, heart attacks, yeah. You know, TIA, strokes, uh, all kinds Jeez. of. So fear, uh, physical healing, miracle healings, and just the restoration of our marriage, which, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in itself I could go for hours. That's beautiful. Talking about because we have, we had, Terry and I have since ministered to many couples uh, about that and the message that we give is a message of hope yeah it's beautiful. with god in your life god in your marriage he can turn it around because only god could in fact turn our situation around because yeah. our situation our counselors after a couple of years had literally thrown up their arms and said i'm sorry there's nothing else we can do <laughs> wow here. wow no, we really need he said, let's take a break wow. 10 minute break and let's come back and decide how do we how do we basically shut this down? I mean, how do we wow. move forward yeah. oh in, a, in a divorce? Can we uh, poke at you a little bit? Just about poke like, um, <laughs> now that you, you, you knew God and you said it, it was the process of even like, you know, you're still a business guy, but now God is involved in your life. Right. And just about, um, I don't know, a certain, give it like a testimony of where, okay, him changing your life and maybe did you fall again? Did you, you know, just a certain mistake or anything? You know, I think, you know, we, we, we meet God. So and, fall again in what way? I mean, just, I mean, anything. Like, you know, I think a lot of us, we, we think we get born again and then like, I'm perfect. And it's like, no, like we still fall. We still grow in God. Do you know what I mean? Like we still, yeah. you know, like, like, like for me, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll share this. Like, mm -hmm. like when I was born again, like I still struggled with like <laughs> pornography. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I got born again. and like, oh, I'm set free. You know, it's like that, like he had to father me through that. And like, you know, that was my mistake. I kept, you know, I would call it a mistake, but like I, you know, I kept falling at this one thing, you know, was, was there anything? Well, I think the, the belief that you start a relationship with him or you're born again, however you want to describe it, and to think you're never going to have any trouble That's yeah. right. or to think that you're never going to fall or stumble or to think that you're never going to sin again is a science fiction movie Come because on, that good. is Come so on, unrealistic because so you're still a human being. Yeah. And, mm. you know, even though we're forgiven for all of our sins, past, present, and future, we still have flaws. And yeah. so, yes, I, you know, I still struggle with things. Um, <clears throat> but 
I was committed to not act things out that were destructive to yeah. me. Wow, that's really good. You know, like chasing, you know, stop, I stopped chasing women. I stopped having affairs. I stopped doing drugs. You know, I stopped, you know, this, I stopped that. I mean, I still drink, but, you know, not to excess. Right. Um, <laughs> Water into wine. Water into wine. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he gave me wine, so why not get the fruit of <laughs> what he <laughs> did, that He's miracle? Good, I mean, that. yes. But uh, but, I love, but all the destructive, the things that hurt other people, you no longer did. Correct. That's I, beautiful. I had to change them. I, mean, I just, I had, um, I, I mean, I wanted to, and, and I needed to, because so I didn't want to continue living like I had for the past 30-some years. Yeah. Wow. How, how, years. how was your business? Were you still in business? Oh, yeah. When I, you, at when this you met point, God? so I became um, born again at, at 45. And um, several years after that, I alluded to it earlier, I left the computer industry after 30-some years, started this headhunter business, right. very high-end executive search, and um, it was extraordinary. I mean, my best year as a headhunter, and I mean, I'm a sole proprietor, it's me. Right. Whoa, and so wow. um, my best year was a million four Ooh. in fees. My gosh. Which was, um, there was really no cost of goods. I mean, my profit margin was like 95%. Wow. Other than the outrageous salary I paid right. myself. <laughs> but you knew that, what you were that doing. to me yes, is a yes. blessing. Come because on. Talk about it. I, um, the way I started the search business was I literally sent out an announcement, kind of like a wedding invitation, just announcing that, how, what did I call it? Patrick Arnone and Associates or Arnone Associates announces you know, the formation of this retained executive search room, yada, yada, yada. And I sent it to all of my uh, friends and business contacts. Mm. So, I mean, the advantage I had at that point was I had been in the industry so for 30 some years in the DC area. And obviously I had contacts outside, but mostly in the DC area. And so that just, that was it. I never spent a dollar on advertising or marketing. Wow. I sent that invitation or announcement out and God brought the clients. Wow, come God on. God brought the clients. There was a period there after, after, and that, certainly that big year of a million four was the internet boom, you know, which right. lasted a year or two. I was fortunate to be Get in the search that. business yeah. in the, during that time. So and good. I was certainly in, the, in there when the bubble burst too, but right, that, right. you know, that had impact, but not, didn't shut the business down. I just wasn't making as much, but I was still extraordinarily blessed by him. Beautiful. But there was a time during that, um, during the search business, after a couple of years, I, we were, Terry and I were in the Living Faiths Training Center. Okay. So we were four-year graduates, and I, I felt convinced that, I think it was my second year as a student, that God wanted me to leave the business, leave my business, wow. the search business, leave wow. the industry, and go into uh, full-time ministry, although I had no idea what that really entailed. <laughs> and so I did. I just, I, you know, to close down the business is easy. I just stopped taking calls, or if I, if I received calls, I just said, I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I've, I've put my business on the side for Wait, now. Were you afraid when, when that happened? I really wasn't. I was excited about it. Really? Oh, yeah. I wasn't, ex you know, and we had clearly financial resources mm. because although we weren't good about saving money, uh, which is a... <laughs> A no, whole nother story yeah. in itself. Yeah, but, uh, about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we had enough. You have, to, a, you have a generation that's going to listen to this. You got to teach we us. We have. <laughs> no, no. We were horrible savers. I mean, I could give so much great advice to young people Come on. of my mistakes, my failures, and all that. But um, yes, yeah, save young, save early. Anyway, so <laughs> we had enough. Write to, that down. Write that down. <laughs> we had enough. That down, we had, and that's nothing new. <laughs> yeah, and, but. Um, yeah. We had enough. I thought, okay, so I'll give this six months, whatever. Well, I, long story short, it took two years. I, I didn't work. We had no income because mm -hmm. Terry had already retired at 50. Mm. Um, and so... You guys did well. For two years, um, we had no income. And I'm, you know, in full-time ministry, although and I was involved in a lot of things, but I felt grossly underutilized. And mm. I would ask God, I'd say... You know, I'd like, coach, put me in the game. Come on I'm now. sitting yep. here on the yep. bench. I mean, 
I've got all this free time. What you know? And so I was doing Bible studies at Oracle, wow. and I was doing Bible studies and leading Bible studies. Oracle, oh, the business? Wow. So these business? Oh yeah, I was going <laughs> there during awesome. the day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, dang. I mean, I was invited in yeah, because yeah, you yeah, had yeah. Uh, you, you know just you had to get down. Yeah, you yeah. had to get authorized. What? What? Were you afraid of rejection when you would come and do these Bible studies? Were no, you afraid of fail there? Absolutely or mis- not. Or nobody no. show up? No, 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 no. I um. Because I would always pray before I went in there. And mm. I mean, there are times like one time I think it was, I mean, it's usually 10, 15, sometimes 20 people. But once it was just me and it's one other people. Oracle employee. Wow. I mean, they advertise it, you know. Right, they, right. So I did this for like eight years. Wow. wow. Oracle, That's a long time. Six or eight years. But anyway, it was just me and this one guy. And and so I said, do you want to do you want to just have the Bible study just you and I, or do you want to you want to leave? And he said, no, I'd like to stay. Aww. So. It was just a. It became a personal one-on-one time, and God had oh, orchestrated that. That's so beautiful. No, I was never worried or afraid of it. So, um, what was my point? Oh, so I Full took time. those two years off, no income, felt underutilized. So I thought I'm going to just hang the shingle back out, and Arnone and Associates is back <laughs> in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my contacts had gone cold. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't work my contacts, and it's kind of like a loaf of bread and go stale on the shelf and so um it's not that people would have forgotten me but you know i had to kind of rekindle old relationships within 60 days and all i did was i did an email blast to all my contacts which is maybe a hundred hundred of uh 150 at the most um friends business associates people i had done searches for god brought me a search one search one company who i'd never done a search for out of Dallas. They were a three billion dollar company. Dallas, Texas. I had never done. Yeah, you know, they were headquartered in Texas. They were a computer services firm, and I had never heard of them. I don't know how they heard about me, but God brought them to me. And over the course of the next six to eight months, they gave me four searches that that literally uh, made up the mo- all the money that we had used out of our savings account. Which was like four hundred grand Dang. was replenished. Oh my gosh! And that was him. I mean, yeah, I didn't yeah. even email that company. <laughs> so that was him. So wow, God, God, if it's possible, God was better. I'm just, I'm just going to say this. I'm say not. It. I'm yeah, not please. Please. No so, the roof I, off this. God was better to me after I had a relationship with Him than before. Yeah. Wow. And He was great to me before because He saved my life multiple yeah, right. times. Yes. You know, He restored my life. He restored my marriage. You know, He did all these things when I didn't know Him. He turned my heart from stone to a heart of flesh when my father had died suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, in his early 70s. Well, uh, can, you, can you take and the he roof did off? A lot of, he did a lot of things. So he was so much better to me. Come on. And blessing me, that being one example, it was just, yeah. why didn't I do this before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, uh, can you take the roof off? You said heart of flesh, uh, heart of stone into a heart of flesh. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Well, what does that actually mean? I, oh uh, gosh, Rafa. Sorry, that's what he does. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, it's easy. It's it's I. Good job, Ralph. I was I, a, I was the kind of person who made people cry. Got you. I mean, because I was hard. Mm. I was a hard driver, a hard manager. Right. Yada yada yada. I keep saying that. I gotta stop saying that. Um, no. I, yeah. No, it's just so but, good. But um, so I made people cry. I never cried. I can't recall crying. You know, and I barely remember that. I'm told that, you know, as an infant, I cried, which obviously all infants cry. But <laughs> as, a, as, wow. a, as a young person, a teenager, I never cried. But at my father's death, um, walking my mom out of the hospital because we had gotten the news that, you know, he had deceased uh, or was deceased. And so I'm the only son, so I'm walking her to the car, driving her home. And I start crying like a baby, a baby. I was uncontrollably crying. And she said, what's wrong with you? And she said, Mom, I just came to the realization, and I, it was a time I couldn't tell this without crying, but mm. uh, I just came to the realization I never told Dad that I loved him. Mm. Mm. And, and that was true. I never spoke those words to him. And yeah. now the opportunity was gone. And she said, she tried to comfort me. I'm there to comfort her. And she said, oh, no, he knows you loved him. Mm. 
But the thing I didn't say to my mom as we walked to the car was he never told me he loved mm, me. Come on, yeah. Mr. Patrick. And so that was just the kind of the peak of what I discovered many years later in counseling about, um, and I didn't come out of a family that was, I wasn't sexually abused, I wasn't physically abused, uh, there was um, more of a um, absence, Yeah. Mm. okay, there was mm. more of a, um, oh gosh, I don't know, how do I describe it, but you know, I, I never had a connection with my father. I had a connection with my mother, and it was not super strong, but strong enough. Right. Never a connection. I feared my father. Um, yeah. You feared he was, him? He was a rageaholic. Oh, yeah, he was a rageaholic. Mm. He was a hard worker, obviously, cold mines at the age of right. 11 years, 12 years of age. He worked in the construction industry, so it was very demanding on mm. him. He was a workaholic. He'd come home and work all day until just before he went to bed. I mean, puttering around outside the house and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, there was no connection with him. And I feared him, and there was never any affirmation, no acceptance. And I, I didn't think of it then, okay? Uh, it didn't bother me because I felt that all my friends were experiencing the same thing. And that right. was in part the generation, you right. know? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking... I think my the, dad would say the same thing. We're fifties yeah. and the sixties. Oh yeah, it was definitely generational. He, I think, he mm. was the best father he could be, mm. based on what he knew and right. how he was fathered and mothered. Um, and I learned that that was the case when uh, part of my counseling, my mother was still with us. My dad obviously had passed, but I went and talked to my mother in a non-threatening way and said, "Help me understand about grandma and grandpa, dad's mom and dad, and mm -hmm. how were they?" In, and she told me things that were like shocking to me. Mm -hmm. It was amazing to me that my father was as good of a father, oh. despite his shortcomings, Woo! based on how he was raised. Wow. His father was a raging, rageaholic, uh, alcoholic, beat his wife. Um, wow! So it was it was amazing, but. The point being is that that caused me to um, have a lot of issues in leaving my parents' house. And the biggest mistake I made was the belief that when I left my parents' house at 19, when I first got married, way too young. Yeah, 19, um, wow. Way, way too young. Um, but the message I heard all the time as I was growing up, my parents were good providers. I mean, I went without nothing that was needed. I certainly went without a lot of things I wanted, but... What I needed was provided. Beautiful. But uh, what I heard was, well, when you get out of the house and you're on your own, you can get that. You know, mm -hmm. you can get that, you can get that, you can get that on your own. That's fine. But my belief, my single biggest mistake and belief was that when I walked out of my parents' house to start my life, it was like walking through that door. I got through the threshold of that door on the other side. That was my new life. And everything that had happened on the other side of that door, my past, was left in that room I was leaving. Wow. Wow. Okay. That was such a stupid thing to believe. But I believed it. Gotcha. Mm. And because everything that had happened to me in my youth, in my teenage years, uh, carried forward. And was a lot of the reasons I was who I was. Wow. Again, I don't I don't blame my mother and father for that. Right. Yeah. Okay. They, did the they were the they best could. parents yeah. that they knew how to be. Mm. Right. Um but I never had the right mentors. I never had anyone that would help me understand how to live my life as a young adult. I mean, my career, oh, be a funeral director. Right, you know? that's crazy. Or my parents, oh, go to college. Oh, you know, do this. Do, right. but don't get married at 19. Well, I ignored oh. all that because yeah. I knew, I, you know, I believed I knew more Everything. than my parents at wow. 19. Stupid. So, Stupid, as they say in Italian. So you're... you're <laughs> So your heart switched from stone to flesh. Oh, I'm sorry. When yes. you allowed yourself to actually feel your emotions. Well, it be they became flesh because of the emotion I allowed to surface because of my father's death. And, and then I just started a journey again through the counseling to understand what oh, had man. happened in my wow. childhood that caused me That's to uh, go into yeah. my adult life and my career and my every aspect of my life being extremely wounded. Wow. Uh, and mm. having a very hard heart. But it got to the point of, and I didn't recognize that at first because I didn't come to Christ. See, my dad died in the early, so it was several years later that I came to Christ, but it wasn't 
until I started that journey with Christ that I, that I started to recognize the, the incident at my father's death and my heart starting to change from rock to soft, to right. flesh. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm crying at Hallmark commercials. You know, <laughs> oh, like, man. <laughs> Same. I'm the same way. I I'm think, the exact yeah, same way. So it's like the nature. God's uh, every, nature oh, my heart. It's like, and I would say, God, please. I think, no, no, no. You yeah, made yeah. it too soft. Yeah, same. You made it too soft. <laughs> I'm crying with everything. Stop. Stop. I'm enough. The same way. I yeah. promise to be good. No, all right. I want to wanna open this up to all three of us. And because uh, a lot of people don't know, but Patrick, yeah, he runs the uh, men's um, uh, ministry team with me. And uh, I, I know uh, um, a very. Um, a scripture that you love is that First Corinthians thirteen mm. about love, because mm-hmm. you always talk about that, and I think that's the nature of God. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one that we we all say, but it's really hard, I think, for all of us, as I'm going to say, and I love for us to talk about it, is love keeps no record of wrongs. Because mm. I feel like you know, as someone that has a history, and and you know, you've 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 been a rock star, you've killed it, you know, you got born mm. again, your experience with your wife and all this, mm. and Rafa, even what you shared on Sunday, mm. and, and me, I think I think <laughs> I would love to uh, kind of dive into that aspect and how he's revealing that nature to all of us, because that, that one never stops. Wow. The fact that he keeps no record of wrongs, I think so many of us, that's kind of a stumbling block. It's, it's too good to be true. That's right. The fact that he keeps no record of wrongs. Mm. Mm. Um, I would love for us to go around if you could think of a, of a story or a, a <laughs> failure time where, where that nature became real for you. And, and I'll start. And I, you know, I mentioned pornography. I, I know for me, um, you know, I I, I kept punishing myself. I thought I kept doing this thing over and over, and I hated it. I hated doing it, where I I would punish myself. And like you know, I memorized the scripture: "Love keeps no record of wrongs." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would still catch myself punishing myself <laughs> to the point where. I remember one time I, I I grabbed my computer and I broke it. Mm. It was really expensive. And it was oh yeah, it was a Mac. It was a G4. <laughs> you know, it was very nice at the time. But I literally slammed it. I took it to the basement and slammed it. I was so mad, and I was like, no more, no more. Like within a week later, I was using someone else's computer. <laughs> like you know what <laughs> oh, I mean? Man. And like uh, I know for me, it, it was when I read Isaiah 54, when he said this, because I knew the First Corinthians 13. I was like, love keeps no record of wrongs, and I'm like, okay. I'm not feeling that right now. You know, I'm, I kind of want to punish myself. You know, it's, it's like, I'm going to make this really hard for myself. And in Isaiah 54, he says, So have I sworn that I'll never be angry with you, mm. nor rebuke you. But he said, My kindness shall never leave you. Beautiful. And um, I know for me, what, what truly set me free from addiction was, uh, I had to let God be kind to me, mm. which I think like you, you know, I, I, my natural father didn't show that side. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what that looked like. Right. You know, like this is my mistake. Right. You know, and so the invitation here is you want to be kind to me? Mm. Like that made no sense. And but it invited me to this real place of actually being vulnerable with God. And I had to say, okay, uh, I'm going to let you be kind to me and love me in this mess. Mm. You know, because I, I knew, I knew this was wrong. I, and the fact God was like, see, you know it's wrong. Now let me love you. Like, you know, the fact that I, I, keep, I keep no record of wrongs means I can be kind to you here. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like him saying, you know, I keep no record of wrongs, but that, that the invitation is there's something for you to receive. And for me, it was because I keep no record of wrongs, I can give you my kindness. Mm-hmm. And I think that was like, I don't know, like the, what do you call that? The exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know for me, that, that was the biggest thing uh, uh, was like, his kindness. Mm-hmm. That's when it That's became beautiful. real. Was mm-hmm. during, you know, we'd say our mistake, our, our yeah. thing we keep doing over, whatever it is. <clears throat> that was the invitation where he keeps no record of wrongs, like led me to that, which means he wanted to be kind to me, mm-hmm. which, you know, I'm still learning today and, you know, in other areas where I fell in life and, you know, as a husband or whatever it is, like you said, we're not perfect. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, God, let's punish. And he's like, no, how about I be kind to you? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can catch myself. I still fight him in that area. Um, you guys, any any stories mm. or anything like? I, let's let's pull that because we're, we're taking the roof off mistakes, and I think that part of his nature is key there. The fact that he keeps no record of wrongs. Yeah. So I'll go to either either one of you on that one. Uh, okay, I'll just go so Mr. Patrick can think. <laughs> but I was thinking about Romans. Uh, in the book of Romans, I think it's Romans six. I read about uh, Paul wrote about Abraham and how Abraham never wavered in faith is what it said. And uh, I don't know if I shared it on here before, but I was like, does, does, have you guys not read the Bible? Like, like, like when he, when they were talking about Abraham, like 
he messed up a lot. There were yeah. so many times he doubted God. There were so many times he would fail. And I looked up the word failure, and it means the lack of success. There were so many times when he heard the voice of God, ended up where God told him to be, and thought that he wasn't <laughs> successful because it didn't look the way he thought it was supposed to look. And so he actually wavered in his faith. But once once it made it to Romans whatever, Romans 6, it's like God doesn't remember any of it. God actually saw him the whole time as a man of faith. And that just blew my whole mind. I was like, God, like, you know, I'm having a conversation with God. I'm like, God, you know this man messed up a lot. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, why are you remembering that? Mm. And it started hitting me of like, wow, like when God said he keeps no record of wrong, he literally doesn't remember what you did wrong. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? And that That's logically crazy. doesn't make sense because then I'm like, why am I remembering it? And he's like, well, you keep thinking about it. You keep bringing it up. So you're actually keeping it alive. Wow. And uh, a pastor here, Pastor Babette, she actually said you can bury things alive. And if you bury them, they're still alive, right? You actually have to allow God to come in with his kindness and kill it, <clears throat> right? And the, the biggest thing I showed with was self-punishment. Every time I would have a lack of success, I was like, God can't mess it up because he's perfect. So if he's perfect, then it has to be me. Yeah. You know, I was like, it's me. I'm the problem, not God. But the problem with, with that was... Since I didn't think it was God messing up, I thought it was just me. I never invited him into the situation. Mm -hmm. But because I never invited his kindness or his goodness, then my heart never changed. You know, Romans 4 also says that it's the goodness of God that leads men to a change of heart or repentance. So my heart never changed because I never allowed his goodness in, yeah. but I always allowed my own self-punishment. So I think the biggest thing that changed for me was... Uh, you gave me this book called Unpunishable. Oh, yeah, that's right, Unpunishable. Yeah, that's it was a right. red book, and I was like, all right, God, you're going to tell everybody my business. <laughs> you're going to tell everybody that much. The big F word is, you know, failure, lack of successes in my life. Right. And and in that book, I found one scripture, and it was, uh, we're rooted and grounded in God. And I think it was in Corinthians, or Colossians, Colossians 2, 7. And, um, and, and that right there just hit hard, where I was like, failure doesn't mean that I'm, it just means that I'm growing. The places where I feel like there's a lack of success is just an opportunity for me to grow with God. But I saw myself as a weak person because I kept growing. And uh, what God was showing me that I thought I was weak because I kept having to grow more in him. Where he was showing me how I was just being a son because I was allowing to grow with him. You know, so every, you know, every time I mess up and I mess up every single day, but rather than beating myself up, now it's Holy Spirit like, can you just come in? Whether the situation is fixed or not, like, can you just come in and love me right now? And, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. Mr. Patrick? Uh -huh. So, uh, to your points, I love the love verses, what yeah. I call the love verses. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time I ever read them in the Bible in my early or mid-40s or so, I thought, that's impossible. How could anyone do that? I mean, I really thought of it as an impossible way to live your life. Yeah. But the more I spent reading it over time and over time, I, th I said, I, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be as a person. That's how I want to be as a husband. Mm. So I want to be as a father, as a grandfather, whatever, friend, whatever. And so I'm a very goal-oriented person because of my career. Right. And um, so... To me, my goal was always to be that, okay? And I've not achieved it, and I never will. I recognize right. that. So good. You know, until I depart this planet and arrive in heaven, this, you know, I'm not going to be there. But it, it drives me. It motivates me to be a better person, to be a better husband in particular. And so uh, not keeping any record of wrongs, um, now, I don't know what it is. I'm not trying to sound special or different in any way from what you two were describing, but not right away at my salvation, but as I grew in Christ in, I don't know how many years, but I, I just ran with it. Mm. I wow. just ran good with job. it. And wow. just you got it. Kind of accepted yeah. it. Yeah. So good. And, and I don't have the head knowledge in the sense of I can't uh, quote chapter and verse. Uh, but I've spent enough time in the Word, uh, enough time in, in, you know, in church now for twenty some years, or thir I'm sorry, thirty some years in two non or non denominational um, Word and Faith church, um, Bible colleges, etc., and just living the Word that's in my heart and yeah. believing the wow, Word that's beautiful. in my heart. So I don't, 
I don't punish myself. Uh, I don't, um, I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I find it easy to live that way. It's good. And it's yeah. a joy to me to live that way. Beautiful. But it's not that things don't still bother me. Right, um, right. But in terms of you don't hold on to it. I having don't no record of wrongs, yeah. I mean, there's still things that I do that I find annoying to me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. that, you know, just silly, <laughs> silly things. Um, and I've shared those at some of our men's meetings that, you know, and, and some quirky behavior that, you know, might, that Terry's not even aware of that I might feel, but I... I just will ask God to just change that in me. It's beautiful. And it doesn't happen right away. It takes time. Mm. But I find eventually, you know, as time passes, I think less and less about that irritant. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I don't care anymore. So you really trust so it. So only he does. Oh, I trust you him. Trust so him. good. I do, because I can't trust myself. Come on. I mean, you know, wow. I can't. I can't. I can't trust myself. I got that problem. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I'm not sure if I answered your question. No, no, I think but so. I just that was what was on my heart as you two spoke. Thank you, Mr. So, Bajan. so even hearing you, like even when you did your ministry, when God told you to do this, were there any moments where you you disqualified yourself? What do you mean disqualify like, myself? Like your past kind of disqualified you from doing that? Oh no. See that's wow. huge. That's, see, oh see, no, not you're at saying all. That, because, uh, no, no, hold on. You're no, saying that like nothing. No hesitancy. Because I think so many of us. Yeah, it's true. We 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 struggle with that one. We disqualify well, ourselves because, like you said, I I mean, I no, I tell you, you it so was you so. Trusted it. I remember the class. I don't remember the subject uh, of the course, but it was Kathy Morris was teaching it. I was a year two student, um, and. I can't re recall the narrative that was going on, but it was, and it wasn't even anything particularly about the teaching, but I felt the Holy Spirit told me right then, just me, that, you know, full-time ministry, go into full-time ministry, just let's, let all this other stuff go, and I want you to work for me, wow. thoughts and wow. feelings to that effect, and when the class was over, I ran, ran up to Kathy. I said, this is what I'm feeling. This is, this is just be prayerful about it. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to Terry about it. I shared it with her. I thought I didn't, I didn't shut the business down right away, but probably within a couple of months, I went out and sought wise counsel. I spoke with some of my Christian brothers. I think I talked to, I don't know if I talked with Pastor Barry or Pastor Bill, but I spoke mm -hmm. with one of them about it. I talked to Kathy Morris about it because she was, you know, she was our director of the training center. So I just, you know, I didn't do it on a whim. But once I got, you know, I was so convicted by the Holy Spirit. I knew it wasn't me because that was the last thought in my body or mind I would right. have. It's like, yeah, walk away from $250,000 a year. <laughs> you know, live off your savings. Oh, yeah, that's not Patrick Arnone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, so it was the Holy Spirit. But once I went through the process because I'm a process-oriented person, got the counsel and got confirmation, I just like, yeah, this is a no-brainer. Let's do it. Wow. My only pleasure. disappointment was, as I said, I felt underutilized. I mean, I thought I'm going to be working 40, 60 hours, a, 60 hours a week. Now, I did a lot of different things for him, I believe, things that he directed me to, um, whether it was in a group setting or a one-on-one -on -one setting, but I just felt underutilized gotcha. mm. and I that that all I, to this day I'm not sure why that is mm. and maybe he was just tell, wanting me to slow down and, wow, and yeah. just trust him, more of trusting in him and don't worry about the money because you know he already knew he was going to bring this client that was going to restore two right. years of spending our savings that's I didn't amazing. Even think yeah, about that's that huge. but so he knew all that so wow. anyway beautiful Mr. Roger long I love that. response to your question so do you feel like we took <laughs> the roof off mistakes and fail? I feel like it's so little now. Like I, I know, I, I so think, small now. I think it's just interesting when you hear people's uh, testimony. Some people just get certain natures of God easier or different. You know, He just reveals them deeper. Like for you, like the fact that no no record of wrongs, man. That like yeah, but that, I did a one. I did a one eighty. Right, I, mean, I was you were you hit that was you hit a, a wall. Bad boy. Yeah, yeah, you were <laughs> out of control. Bad boy, the big. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there, I didn't murder anyone, but I, right. I came close. You, <laughs> that know, you I didn't, know of. Yeah. I didn't commit any felonies, but I came close. That's but, awesome. But um, no record or wrong. I mean, you, you, yeah, I know you started off with rejection and mistakes and yeah. that sort of thing. I mean, as I said, I mean, those are part of our life. You've got to accept it and go with it. If that becomes a 
a problem for you if you're starting to uh, embrace that mistake or that failure. My God, you're doomed. Yeah. You're doomed. Yeah. I mean, that isn't that I mean, isn't what God that, wants yeah. for, uh, for, of you. He, you know, so you've got to break through that. You've got to look at that as just a learning experience. It is a learning experience. Yeah. Um, he'll help you. I mean, if you have a relationship with him, leave it at his feet. Help, let him help you, guide you, or to let the Holy Spirit guide you as to what to do, how to deal with that. But to harbor that is is just... I mean, that to me is is suicidal. It's wow. really it's it's so not good. even spiritual Gosh, suicidal. It's scary. life. I know suicidal. hearing you say that is like so good. As no, like but a it is. It's figure. such yeah, a yeah. and I don't mean to diminish it. No, I know no, it's very you're, you're real. Right, it's you know mistakes so and failures, rejection. I mean, they're they're all real things. I experienced all those. You things, make me want to make cold calls right now. But I no, I <laughs> Wait, will never somebody. make another cold What's call. What's the number? Don't matter. Just dial. God told me it was done. (laughs) No more cold calls. Thank you, Jesus. But um, final point is, you know, I guess also I was always a person, and I'm not sure why, but I was always a person that never looked at the glass half empty. Because to me, that's that's what I call NMA, negative uh, mental uh, attitude. I was always a glass half empty. Full, which so was good. always PMA, positive mental attitude. Okay. And to the extent that I don't yeah. even I don't even like to think of the glass half full. I like to think of the glass overflowing. Ooh, Seriously, that's so good. Because I mean, so I would always find ways before my salvation to motivate myself. Gotcha. And not to look at failures. I mean, tapes and books. Mm. I would go to and from work listening to these different motivational speakers. I needed to get pumped up for this stuff. Right. You know. But I think even like as, as us two hearing you learn so much. I think we've learned what we've made this big is really this big. That's right. Like, like yeah. I mean, like I said, I I kind of feel like okay. So like I have a fear of rejection. I'll admit this. I have a fear of rejection. Like especially when like making calls and certain <laughs> What'd things. What'd you say last? And, one? I'm, hi, my name is Abel, and uh, yeah. I'm afraid <laughs> I'm alcoholic. No, well, I'm, but, a, no, but, I'm afraid. You know, of that's a good point. I, you know and. I hated rejection. Yeah. Okay. As I as I said, from a sales point of view, and I think that you know I was uncomfortable with with rejection in school, feeling I wasn't up to it. But I never had what I would call a fear of it. Yeah. Um, my mindset was more of succeeding. Yeah. Okay. As opposed to being fearful. The perspective. Of, the glasses have of full. failure. Now, you know, many will say that you know a fear of failure should propel you to to succeed. And it could or should if you have the right attitude, but it's all mm. up here. It's, it's all of what's in your head, it's right? It's I mean, good. Pastor Barry and others, it's it's all here between the ears. That's true. Mm. I mean, what is that? What is that attitude? That's yeah. so not good. a positive attitude. Come on, that, I mean, where does that come from? That come comes on. from the devil. That come kind on, of, Mr. No, it does. I mean, that that's clearly NMA. That's negative mental attitude. Come on now. I mean, just get rid of it. You look, to, look in this camera and just say, "Quit being negative." <laughs> you no, know, I mean, really, you have to be. You have to be. That's good. Um, you have to quit because there's nothing good that's going to come out of on, being negative, you. being fearful, fearing, fearing rejection. Uh, I mean, yes, it's real. I'm not trying to diminish it, but don't let that control your life, and certainly don't let that, you know, drive you. Make look at the positive things. Look at the opposite of so things. So good, Mr. Patrick. So simple. Anyway, I love it. It is good. simple. Well, I love what you're sharing. And we try to make it, unfortunately, yes. many humans, myself included, yeah, no, I do. try to make things more difficult. Yeah. Yes. I we complicate it. We do. We complicate it. Like, I love Absolutely. everything Everything you have shared. I love because it's something I can literally do as soon as I get up to see. And, and I'm really, I hope you viewers love this too. As soon as the video ends that you're able to apply all this stuff right away. You yeah. know? Okay, so you asked for a final thought. Here it yeah. is. Oh, here it so is. So this man here, yeah, Rafa, okay, he blessed me. He blessed me so much uh, when I heard that he had commented that, uh, and I don't remember who, but so- someone here, another man in the church, that how much he loves to sit down with, um, um, you know, an older person, if you will. Oh, yeah, and 50s, learn. 50s, 40s, 70s, whatever, because he wants to learn from their mistakes. Sure. And I shared this with him. I think that is so, he is such an enlightened statement. I mean, that's an enlightened attitude. That's an enlightened belief to say, I want to learn from his mistakes and his failures. 
I mean, what 20 some year old thinks that way? It's good. I mean, I never had a mentor in my life. I never did. That's amazing. And so, I mean, for him to think that way and to be uh, propelled that way, I think is awesome. So find a mentor, find several good mentors and learn from other people's mistakes. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Seriously. That's good. Getting a mentor. I think at least one, at maybe least one, several. someone to speak into your life and say, "Hey, these Absolutely. are the mistakes I've made, right?" And grow from it. So, right. man, that was so good. Yep. Godfather, you. thank you so much for coming down. My I really pleasure. appreciate it. My pleasure, Patrick Arnone. Man, thank you so much for just even opening up your heart Blessed about your wife here. and the testimony. I mean, you've um, you did it all. Changed my life. Thank you. Love you. you were a Still rock doing it. Star. You're so, welcome. So, um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm your host. We have our co-host, and uh, we'll see you next time on the No Roof Podcast. <laughs>